back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well, enjoying the weather. Spring has sprung, and we're heading into slightly warmer weather, which is good for the racetrack. Hopefully you'll be able to get out there, enjoy your car, or cars as the case may be, and do some racing. Today we're going to go back to a subject that we briefly touched on about a month ago, and that's exhaust gas temperature and individual cylinder trims. EGT is something the diesel guys are very, very cognizant of. Guys that run methanol definitely pay attention to. Gas and ethanol it doesn't seem to be as popular, even though there is a definite need. Uh, cylinder balancing is very important as we can create engine damage inadvertently since a wide band is a global function typically. We don't have individual wide bands. But individual EGT can give us data of which cylinders are running rich, which ones are running lean, kind of figure out what we may or may not have to do to correct a tune to keep the motor happy. So let's open up the Infinity software. We're going to look at an example, which is my Civic. This is on gasoline before I switched it to methanol. Now, as you can see, we were 8,500 RPM, 100% throttle, basically the end of a pull. 173 kPa, so I think right around 12 pounds of boost is what this is working out to. We'll switch to SAE units, make it easier on the non-metric guys. Ten point seven. This particular pull was five hundred and ninety-seven horsepower on pump gas. You can see the timing was fourteen point four eight degrees. Back pressure was actually kind of high, amazingly one point one to one thirteen pounds of back pressure. There's an ignition trim function which we'll get into. Something that I do a little bit differently than most tuners, pulling half a degree of timing. We can see the knock values here, which are arbitrary AEM numbers that you have to set up. We are in third gear. So we have EGT. Cylinder 1, 1,535 degrees. Cylinder 2, 1,553 degrees. This is actually cylinder 3. I know what the tag says. There's a story behind that. Cylinder 3 is 1,530. So that's our back bank. We skip to the, the front bank. So cylinders 4, 5, and 6, 1407, 1402, number 6, rounding out at 1512. More or less pretty average. We do have two cylinders that are running cooler. Potential reasons for that. Uh, maybe there's too much ignition timing. Maybe I need to pull more timing on those particular cylinders. Maybe they were running a little bit rich. In this case, they would be at the back of the intake manifold. Technically, the front cylinders on towards the timing uh, belt as well. Why the, the balance? I'm going to go with it's just EGT variation. But as you can see, average temp right around 1,500 degrees, 1,530. Typical number for a gasoline motor at wide open throttle. If it's properly set up, 1,600 degrees. So I was running a little bit rich to keep the pump gas happy. So, this is an example of what you might see if you had individual EGT. The whole reason these numbers are goofy and not 1 through 6 is the AM CAN EGT was not compatible with my EGT sensor, so I had to stagger them. I could do them in pairs, but I couldn't run them all right in a row. Getting back to the, the temperatures, though, before, these numbers were substantially higher. The back bank, because of how the cam is ground from the factory and how it degrees out, doesn't always uh, coincide with the front. We get slightly different compression numbers. We get slightly different temperature numbers. Not the intake manifold itself or the aftermarket cams I have. It's something that's designed into the camshaft from the manufacturer. Now let's go to the cylinder fuel trims real fast. You're going to see how I was correcting for some of these temperatures. These numbers are correct. So injector one, I was adding 7%. Injector two, I was adding 7%. Injector three, 
I was only adding 3%, the front bank, I wasn't doing anything. Now, it doesn't allow you to pull in the infinity, so I might have been tempted to pull a little fuel out of 4 and 5, but it's pump gas, it's low octane relative to what we're doing. It is a 10.3 to 1 compression motor and running 12 pounds of boost, so I wasn't going to push it. This was more just for break-in and kind of figuring out the new combo. But something else that could have been causing it, as I mentioned, was too much timing. Timing will actually drop EGT. Or, alternatively, timing will increase EGT if it's substantially retarded. Now, in this particular case, I wasn't doing individual cylinder ignition trim. But I was doing something a little bit different than a lot of tuners. And if you were to look at this table, just for the sake of discussion, I'm going to leave it in PSI, but you can see over here, right in that 10 to 11 pound range, versus my back pressure, which was 13, I'm, I'm floating right in this column right here. So I, I pull timing versus back pressure, something that by and large I figured out that helps keep the engine a little bit safer. So I have trim tables. This is my low boost trim table here. As you can see, it goes negative five to 20 pounds. If we switch back over to the ignition map here real quick. You can see that I have the high boost version that goes from 21 to 50. So we can theoretically try to keep the motor safe on methanol. I had this table zeroed out. I wasn't as concerned about it, but it's a safety that I run on gas and, and ethanol cars if I have EMAP wired in. So that's where that trim number was coming from. But you could do the same thing per cylinder in uh, several stock ECUs. Uh, Subaru stands out as a, an example. They do that factory, in fact, on the, the back two cylinders. Um, you can do that in most standalones. You can pull per cylinder. So we have a, a little bit of capability to save some some cylinders if they were running too much timing for some reason. Well, that's not the case here. It's just one more thing we can do to keep our engine happy. Well, there's not a whole lot to talk about as far as the EGT data. Now, we're going to pause and switch to methanol and kind of compare some of these numbers. So as we do that, you are going to see the timing map's going to change a little bit. Some of the, the other data is going to change, but more or less it's going to stay similar to what you're used to seeing. So switching to methanol, a little bit more boost, we start to see that the EGT sensors had already started to be flaky. Four and five here, obviously not 5,900 degrees. But we did kind of see an interesting trend. 1 and 2 didn't get as cold as 3 and 6, where they're more in that 1,250 degree range that we like to see on methanol. Cylinder 1 was indicating 1,294. So when we look to the cylinder fuel trim, you'll notice one of the reasons is I had actually started to pull fuel back out, which wasn't necessarily what it wanted. We start to get some temperature. So... I ended up having to add that back in after that particular pull. But as it progresses, we can kind of see a relationship between ignition timing and the uh, EGT still pulling half a degree because the back pressure operating in that same 1.1 to 1 ratio. But similar RPM little bit more timing. Now we're at 16.8, so that also is helping. Obviously, getting the methanol in there started uh, to cool things off. We can look at the knock numbers. They're still right around that 0 .10, 0 0.11 range, so wasn't really leaning on it at this point. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick update to EGT and individual cylinder fuel trims. Kind of see some more of the tools that you can use to balance an engine out to, number one, make horsepower, but to keep it safe, keep that race engine going as long as possible. 
Hope you're all doing well. Take care and we'll talk to you later.